Here we go. There we go. Good evening, guys. How are you? Am I muted? No? Okay, I'm fine. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hello, Byron. How are you today? I am good. Awesome. Good evening. You? I'm doing fine, Iris. How are you? How are you doing today? Good. I'm happy. And awesome. You? I'm happy too. Thank you for asking, Iris. And I'm happy that you that you are happy. <laughs> that makes me happy. Okay. How about the rest, guys? How are you doing today? How is your day going? ¿Qué tal, guys? ¿Cómo están? Gusto estar con ustedes otra vez. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Guys, es la última semana. Así que, muy bien. Felicidades a todos. Ya casi terminamos. Solamente nos falta cuatro clases más. Así que, muy bien. Muchas gracias por esa, el esfuerzo que ustedes hacen. Gracias por estar aquí otra vez más. Solamente tenemos eh, hasta el jueves y se finaliza. ¿De acuerdo? So, I'm very proud of you guys. You, you have done a very good job. Okay, thank you. Very good. You are awesome, guys. You are really awesome. Muy bien, guys. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo han estado? Cuéntenme, ¿qué tal estuvo su fin de semana? Very good time to rest and um, do some shopping, teacher. Do some shopping. Okay, good. I like that. I I went out too. I, I spent some time with the family. So basically, I did the same thing that you did. Very good. Very good, Iris. Yeah, I went. Uh, I actually went. Let me see. Well, I did a lot of things on the weekend, actually. I went to La Paz. Then I came back uh, to San Salvador. Then I I went to the to the movies. I actually I actually went to see one of these uh, new movies. Uh, do you guys like Marvel movies? Does anybody like Marvel movies? Like The Black Panther, Doctor Strange? Anything like that? Yes, I like the Marvel movies. Okay, very good. So what is your favorite, Byron? Do you have a favorite Marvel movie? Uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man, okay, good. Very good. I like that. I like that too. But which one? Because there are like a lot of Spider-Man movies. I mean, do you like the new ones like Sp Spider-Man, uh, Far From Home or Spider-Man, No Way Home? Which one is your favorite? In my case, my favorite Spider-Man movies from is First Three. The first three, uh, okay. Tobey Maguire. Oh, okay, Tobey Maguire, uh, Spider-Man movies. Okay, very good. Yeah, I think that personally, I like those movies better than the new ones. So I agree with you. I agree with you, Byron. Sí, <laughs> bueno. Bueno, guys, eh, muchas gracias. Y sí, eh, Byron, a mí también me gustan más las de Tobey Maguire. No sé por qué, quizás porque ya estoy viejo, ¿verdad? Yes. Entonces es como que... <risa> Esas son las que vi cuando estaba bastante pequeño, ¿verdad? Entonces es como que eran bien divertidas para mí. Aunque las, las nuevas también están bastante bien, ¿verdad? La, la última, al menos me gustó. La última yeah. estuvo bien. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it was good. It was good. Ok, guys. Eh, bueno, bienvenidos a todos. Eh, ya estamos 12 por ahora. Creo que todavía hacemos falta, ¿verdad? Somos 20. Así que vamos a esperar unos segunditos más. Vamos a esperar unos segunditos más. No sé si hay algo que les gustaría comentar antes de que empecemos. A ver. ¿Tienen alguna pregunta, alguna inquietud que les gustaría comentar?
No questions. Okay. So last week, guys, we were talking about uh, sequence adverbs, right? I can imagine that you remember that. So we were saying that we can use sequence adverbs for things like uh, processes, uh, recipes, uh, that kind of things, right? For example, when you want to describe how to uh, make a dish, okay? Like how to prepare a sandwich, how to cook eggs and things like that. So I think that we learned, uh, we learned how to do that. I can imagine that you guys don't have any problem uh, with that particular topic. Um, vamos a ver, eh, ¿se acuerda alguien de que, eh, solamente para re recapitular, verdad? Yo creo que ustedes ya lo manejan súper bien. Este, ¿Qué es lo que dijimos acerca de los adverbios de secuencia? Can somebody tell me? Can somebody explain me that? We said a couple of things about sequence adverbs. Uh, for example, we said that uh, there are some sequence adverbs that can uh, be, that are interchangeable, okay? And then we have other two sequence adverbs that we are not able to change. So can somebody explain mm -hmm. me that? Hmm? Fears. Yes, go ahead, Alicia. I remember the item in the chart about uh, parts and final. That is correct. Very good. Thank you so much, Alicia. That is correct. So we have first and finally, those we are not able to change, right? That's what we said last Friday. But then we have other uh, sequence adverbs like then, after, next, those we can change, okay? We can use them uh, any way we want to, okay? But when it comes to first and finally, they have to be at the beginning and also at the end, okay? So that's very good, very good, guys. All right, so for today, guys, we are going to talk about a new topic. So for today, we are going to talk about the future, okay? How to express uh, situations that take place in the future. Okay, so I'm going to share the presentation with you. Give me just a second, guys. Bueno, vamos a comenzar. Les voy a compartir la presentación. Para el día de ahora, guys, vamos a hablar acerca de... Creo que ya lo pueden ver, ¿verdad? Ok, vamos a hablar acerca del de yeah. futuro. Thank you. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the future. So we have uh, we kind of have these uh, two objects here. We have uh, number one, uh, the future tense is what we use to discuss our plans and hopes, okay? In this lesson, uh, we are going to learn how to use going to and will. So that is what we are going to do. We are going to learn how to use going to and will because there is a difference between them okay going to that is something that we are going to use for some situations only and then we have will will uh, there are some uses for will okay so that is what we are going to learn and then uh, we are also going to learn how to ask and answer questions using going to and will De acuerdo. Eh, vamos a aprender, guys, de cuál es la diferencia entre esto, entre going to. Algunos de ustedes probablemente ya lo sepan, eh, algunos otros tal vez no. Entonces vamos a ver como en mayor detalle cuándo vamos a utilizar going to, cuándo vamos a utilizar will para hablar acerca de cosas del futuro. De acuerdo. Eh, yo, yo trato como de siempre buscarle una, digamos, una similitud o una analogía, si ustedes gustan con respecto a el español, ¿verdad? Entonces, en este caso, eh, will, siempre que utilizamos nosotros will con otro verbo, porque will funciona como un verbo auxiliar, ¿ok? Eh, cuando nosotros utilizamos will, básicamente es como cambiar el verbo de la forma base a la forma del futuro cuando nosotros decimos, por ejemplo, yo haré, eh, yo compraré una casa en dos años, Yo cocinaré la cena esta noche. 
y así, ¿verdad? Esa es la traducción literal. All right, so we have the future with will. Uh, so we are going to use the future with will so we can talk about an event in the future that you have just decided to do, okay? So that is really important, guys. We are going to use will only in situations that we didn't plan before, okay? Something that we decided at the time that we are speaking, okay? So that is uh, number one. And also for predictions and promises. So we have three uses for will. Things that we decided at the time that we are speaking for something that we want to predict, something that is going to happen in the future. And then also for promises. Okay, so here we have, it says decisions made at the moment of speaking. Okay, like in a restaurant, uh, plans made quickly after some information that we learned from someone. Uh, so for example, uh, if you are at the restaurant and you want to order something to eat, uh, that is something that you decide at the moment that you are speaking, okay? So most of the times uh, when somebody asks you what you want to order, like what, what do you want for dinner? Uh, then you are going to answer using will, okay? So I'll have, I will have mashed potato, for example. Okay, so that is a one, that is a situation when we are going to use will. De acuerdo, okay guys. Entonces eh, nosotros utilizamos will para situaciones eh, principalmente tres, ¿verdad? Cosas que acabamos de decidir, predicciones y para promesas. Eh, por ejemplo, cuando estamos ordenando nuestra comida, eh, nosotros por lo general utilizamos will, ¿ok? No sé si ustedes ya lo han notado, es como que I'll have, por lo general está contractado, ¿verdad? Eh, yo se los puse acá así, porque, bueno, es para ilustrarlo nada más, ¿verdad? Pero normalmente está en la forma contractada. Cuando nosotros hablamos, nosotros decimos I'll have uh, mashed potatoes eh, or I'll have uh, baked uh, chicken o algo así, ¿verdad? Un ejemplo. I'll have baked chicken, por, por ejemplo. Solamente es un ejemplo. Pueden ser otra cosa. Pero la, la idea es que casi siempre cuando nosotros eh, estamos hablando eh, de algo que vamos a ordenar para comer, nosotros utilizamos will, ¿ok? Porque es algo que decidimos al momento que estamos hablando. Esa es una clave para el uso de will, en lugar de otro tiempo del verbo en el futuro. ¿Ok? Entonces vamos a ver eh, como más ejemplos, ¿verdad? Y vamos a ver la estructura también. De acuerdo. Eh, para hacer una oración del tipo afirmativa, nosotros vamos a utilizar esta estructura de acá. Okay, so we have the subject, in this case, I, then will, and after that, we're going to have the base form of the verb, okay? Like play, in this case, I will play. So I will play video games tonight. Okay, so probably that is something that I decided at this moment, okay? At the moment that I am speaking. Eh, si ya hubiera planeado yo con anticipación eh, una actividad, en ese caso, normalmente nosotros no utilizamos will, ¿ok? Lo utilizamos para cosas que decidimos y que no estaban planeadas con anticipación. Así que esa es la clave, guys. Eso es lo que tenemos que tener en mente. Entonces la estructura va a ser esta. Subject plus will plus the base form of the verb plus eh, some complement, ¿ok? Como siempre, eh, lo vamos a hacer de esta forma. Nosotros, el sujeto, el verbo will, que es un auxiliar. El verbo va en la forma base. Aquí no lo vamos a cambiar. No va en pasado. No va en pasado participio. Se queda en la forma base. Luego eh, va el complemento, que puede ser lo que nosotros queramos para darle como más contexto a la conversación. ¿De acuerdo? So, I will play video games tonight. Or, I will... Uh, cook a uh, dinner tonight. 
De acuerdo, eh, probablemente eh, yo no tenía planeado eh, cocinar, pero de repente pues me di cuenta de algo, eh, digamos que el restaurante está cerrado donde yo quería ir, por ejemplo, y entonces eh, ya al momento de hablar cambié de opinión y bueno, ya es algo que acabo de decidir. So, I will cook dinner tonight. Like, por ejemplo, lo podemos decir así. ¿ver? Vamos a decir, the restaurant is closed, so I will cook dinner tonight. Things like that. ¿Verdad? Podemos decirlo de esa forma. The restaurant is closed, so I will have, uh, or I will cook dinner tonight. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces son como ejemplos, ¿verdad? Acerca de cuándo vamos a utilizar Will. Eh, vamos a ver, por acá esta es la oración de tipo afirmativa, ¿verdad? Afirmativa. Vamos a ver ahora oraciones negativas. Eh, es similar, bastante similar. Eh, we have the subject, then we have Will, and then we have this word, not. ¿Ok? So, I will not do something, ¿ok? So, subject plus will plus not. O si ustedes quieren, lo pueden hacer de la forma abreviada. La forma abreviada sería esta de acá. Want. ¿Ok? W-O-N-T. I'm sorry. W-O-N apostrophe T. And then we have the base uh, form of the verb. Again. And then some complement if you want to. De acuerdo, entonces la forma negativa, guys, es bastante simple, ¿verdad? Es bastante similar, solamente agregamos eh, esta palabra not después de will o lo podemos hacer de la forma contractada también. So, I want eat chicken. Uh, she won't go to the party. Ok. She won't go to the party. Let's say that uh, somebody... Let's say... Let's say that somebody is asking if that person is going to go to the party and then somebody else uh, decides for that person. Like, eh, supongamos de que en este caso eh, una amiga llega a la casa de, 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 otra, de otra chica, ¿verdad? Y le pregunta al papá de, 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 esta, de esta persona si puede ir a la fiesta. Entonces, eh, el papá le puede decir, no, eh, no irá a la fiesta. Ok, es como que en ese momento lo acaba de decidir y está diciendo que no, que no va a ir a la fiesta. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, como les mencionaba, son cosas que decidimos en el momento. O para predicciones. ¿Ok, guys? Ya les voy a mostrar eh, algún ejemplo acerca de eso. Vaya, supongamos de que nosotros tenemos un amigo que está estudiando eh, para ser un doctor, por ejemplo. Nosotros podemos decir, uh, my friend is studying so he can be a doctor he will be so he will be an excellent doctor vamos a, si, si quieren lo podemos hacer de otra forma todavía vamos a ver i am sure He will be an excellent doctor, ¿ok? Digamos, mi amigo está estudiando para, para convertirse en un doctor. Y yo estoy seguro que él será un doctor excelente. ¿Qué pasa acá? Nosotros eh, no, es, no podemos estar seguros al 100% de esto, ¿verdad? Pero nosotros estamos prediciendo, en nuestra opinión, que él va a ser un buen doctor, ¿ok? Entonces, este es otro caso. Vamos a ponerlo de otra forma, mejor. I think he will be an excellent doctor. Ok, entonces nosotros estamos prediciendo que eso va a ser el caso. Ok, no hay una forma que nosotros podamos comprobarlo. ¿De acuerdo? O sea, es solamente una predicción. Que es lo que les estaba mencionando. También se utiliza para predicciones. De acuerdo, entonces ya vimos eh, cosas que acabamos de decidir y predicciones. ¿De acuerdo? Y hay palabras que también nos, eh, nos dan como la pauta en la cual nosotros vamos a utilizar eh, will en lugar de otras expresiones como going to, ¿ok? Nosotros también tenemos la forma be going to, 
para que podamos hablar de cosas en el, en el futuro. De acuerdo, entonces ya vamos a ver bien esa parte, ya se la voy a mostrar. Eh, también podemos hacer preguntas, ¿ok? So, so we can ask questions using will. We are going to do the same thing that we have been doing, guys. We just need to change the order, ¿ok? So we have the subject, and then we have the, the auxiliary verb, in this case is will, but so we can ask questions, we just change the position, ¿ok? So we're going to uh, we're going to put will at the beginning. If you want to make a yes no question, okay? Will you go? Will you go to the party? Will she go to the party? And we have different options for that, okay? Así que nosotros podemos hacer preguntas eh, yes no questions como hemos estado haciendo o podemos hacer preguntas de información, ¿verdad? Utilizando WH words, like when, why, what, which, how, all those kind of words. Okay. okay, we can use all those words so we can ask questions using will. So, for example, we have when will you eat chicken? Okay. En ese caso, la respuesta no sería esta, ¿verdad? En ese caso, la respuesta sería información. Um, maybe next month, okay? Por ejemplo, tal vez el próximo mes. Tal vez el próximo mes, no estoy seguro. ¿De acuerdo? No lo he decidido todavía. Entonces, esa es una clave siempre para el futuro utilizando will. Como les mencionaba, esta es una pregunta eh, de información. Si queremos hacer una pregunta uh, de tipo yes, uh, yes or no, then we are just going to use this structure that we have here. Will you eat chicken, for example? Okay. Then we can say, yes, I will, or no, I won't. That is going to be the answer. Yes, I will. No, I won't. De acuerdo, guys. Eh, ¿Vamos bien hasta ahora? ¿Tenemos alguna pregunta? Ya vamos a practicarlo para que ustedes eh, no les quede ninguna duda. Probablemente ustedes ya conocían este tema. Porque es bastante común, ¿verdad? Pero eh, de, de cualquier forma tenemos que revisarlo. Y si ustedes eh, tienen alguna duda, pues ya saben que yo estoy acá para ayudarles. Y aparte, pues también creo que hay cosas que tal vez eh, yo les puedo decir que tal vez ustedes no conozcan. De acuerdo, ok. Bueno, si no tenemos preguntas, vamos a hacer algo por aquí. Permítanme un instante, guys. Quiero ver. Okay. Vaya, este, vamos a hacer algo acá, vamos a, vamos a escuchar el video que forma parte de esta, de esta parte de, del tema y me gustaría que ustedes presten atención y que por favor eh, puedan tomar notas, como siempre hacemos, ¿de acuerdo? Se los voy a reproducir. Y ustedes, por favor, eh, toman notas para que lo podamos, eh, podamos ver eh, qué es lo que hemos podido identificar de parte del video. Y al final del video vamos a poder tener una parte en la cual ustedes eh, puedan tener eh, una participación. Y si tienen dudas, pues también las podemos comentar. ¿Okay? Así que les voy a reproducir por acá el video y lo vamos a escuchar. Y por favor, tomemos notas, ya sea en el teléfono o algún cuaderno, ok? So, let's do that, guys. Ok? Give me just a second. Ok, ahí está. Se lo voy a poner por acá. Bueno, lo vamos a escuchar. Esto es acerca de will and be going to. Ya van a escuchar parte de lo que yo les estaba explicando. Permítanme un instante, nada más. Ok, guys, here we go. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to talk about future plans. You'll also learn how to use be going to and will as you're expressing your future plans. For example, I'm going to go to France for my next vacation. I'm not sure what place I'll visit yet, but I think I'll visit the Eiffel Tower.
Before I explain the grammar involved in this lesson, I would like to play an audio program to illustrate how this topic is used. Your task is to listen carefully and take notes as I'll ask a few questions about this listening activity at the end. I'm so excited. We have two weeks off. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. I guess I'll just stay home. Maybe I'll hang out with my friends and watch some movies. What about you? Any plans? Yeah, I'm going to relax at the beach with my cousin. We're going to go surfing every day. And my cousin likes to fish, so maybe we'll go fishing one day. Sounds like fun. Say, why don't you come with us? Do you mean it? I'd love to. I'll bring my surfboard. That's great. The more the merrier. By the way, where are we going to stay? Oh, we can stay in my aunt and uncle's beach house. They have plenty of room, and I'm sure they'll be happy to have guests. I'll call in tonight to let them know what time we're going to arrive. I guess we'll leave pretty early. There's a direct bus every morning at 5 a.m. That's fine with me. I think I'll be too excited to sleep. De acuerdo, guys. Vamos a reproducirlo una vez más, ¿ok? Vamos, vamos otra vez. We have two weeks off. Notes, as I'll ask a few questions about this listening activity at the end. I'm so excited. We have two weeks off. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. I guess I'll just stay home. Maybe I'll hang out with my friends and watch some movies. What about you? Any plans? Yeah, I'm going to relax at the beach with my cousin. We're going to go surfing every day. And my cousin likes to fish, so maybe we'll go fishing one day. Sounds like fun. Say, why don't you come with us? Do you mean it? I'd love to. I'll bring my surfboard. That's great. The more the merrier. By the way, where are we going to stay? Oh, we can stay in my aunt and uncle's beach house. They have plenty of room, and I'm sure they'll be happy to have guests. I'll call in tonight to let them know what time we're going to arrive. I guess we'll leave pretty early. There's a direct bus every morning at 5 a.m. That's fine with me. I think I'll be too excited to sleep. Now let me present this structure. What we want to do in this lesson is learn how to talk about future plans using going to and will. All right, guys. So uh, we have two women. Uh, they were talking about uh, their plans. It seems like one of them, well, they have two weeks off, okay? That is to begin with. Uh, they have two weeks off. So they are talking about what their plans are, okay? One of them has already decided what she's going to do, and the other one, it doesn't know exactly what she's going to do, okay? So what were you able, uh, what were you guys able to know the, I'm sorry, what were you guys able to, uh, to get from the conversation? What did you guys under, understand from the conversation? Where something. Perdón? Something, not, not all. Okay, uh, so what did you, what do you have from the conversation, René? What did they say? Uh, uh, the first person, uh, her plans uh, are stay, stay, stay at home. She's and the other to... person, mm -hmm. um, uh, she, she have a plan to, to, go, to go to the beach or to and, the beach. And fishing in the, the next Monday and something like that. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Thank you so much, Renee, that is correct. So one of them is saying that maybe She's going to stay at home. Maybe uh, she's going to hang out. Uh, 
maybe she she will hang out with some friends. That's what she said. And the other lady, uh, she was saying that uh, she's going to go to the beach. Okay. So, Joel. <clears throat> Um, there are there are two girls mm -hmm. talking about the vacation. That is correct. Yes. One girl say mm -hmm. says that she's going to to go to go to the beach with mm -hmm. her cousin. I think. With her cousin. Yes. Very good. Yes. And uh, um, and she said that she wants. To, to go fish or surfing. Surfing. Something like that. Mm -hmm. That is and, correct. And, and, and the other girl say that she she's going to be in home, maybe watching movies mm -hmm. or that is... something like that. Very good. Very good job, Joel. Very good. Thank you. So, yes, uh, there you go. All right, so yes, uh, they were talking about what they are, uh, what their plans are, okay? One of them has already decided what she's going to do. And the other girl, she said that she doesn't know. She's not sure, okay? So uh, here we have uh, some, of the, some of the expressions that they used in the conversation. So I'm going to relax at the beach, okay? So we are going to use that kind of expressions with be going to when we are talking about something that we have decided for plans that we already have. And on the other hand, we are going to use will for possible plans before we made the decision. Okay. Entonces, tenemos dos casos, como les estaba mencionando anteriormente. Tenemos casos donde ya hemos decidido, tenemos el plan ya. Y el otro lado es que eh, no lo hemos decidido todavía. Como lo decía en la conversación, eh, una de ellas eh, ya había decidido qué es lo que iba a hacer. Estaba diciendo que iba a pasar tiempo en la playa con su familia, eh, que iba a pasar tiempo, creo que con el primo, que iban a ir a surfear y un montón de actividades. ¿De acuerdo? Mientras que la otra eh, señorita, ella no estaba segura, no tenía ningún plan. Entonces ella dice, no lo sé, supongo que me quedaré en casa, eh, tal vez vea algunas películas, cosas por el estilo, ¿ok? Entonces cuando nosotros no hemos decidido qué es lo que vamos a hacer, en esos casos nosotros utilizamos will, ¿ok? Like in this case, we have, I'm not sure... I guess I'll just stay home. Maybe I'll watch a few DVDs. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I think I'll go camping. I probably won't go anywhere. Okay. Y otra cosa bien importante, bueno, acá ustedes se fijan, tenemos expresiones que nos dan la pauta que vamos a utilizar will. ¿De acuerdo? Cuando nosotros decimos, por ejemplo, I guess, maybe, I think, or probably, we use will for that, okay? So I guess I'll just stay home. Maybe I'll watch a few DVDs. Entonces, esas palabras nos van a ayudar a nosotros a identificar que vamos a utilizar will, okay? Porque no estamos seguros. Yo supongo, eh, tal vez, yo creo, probablemente, probablemente si vaya, probablemente no vaya. Entonces, eso nos va a ayudar a determinar cuál vamos a utilizar eh, por encima del otro. Okay, so guys, uh, do you have any questions about this so far? Any questions at this point? Okay, no questions. Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver, guys, eh, vamos a continuar por acá. Bueno, vamos a seguir escuchando el, el audio y después vamos a continuar, ¿de acuerdo? Now, for the main part, both of those are quite similar when you express future plans or when you express things about the future. But what we're going to learn in this class is that we're going to use 
be going to whenever you talk about something that you've decided on. That's the key here. Something that you've decided on, we're going to use be going to. So let me give you a quick example about that. Let's say that you're going to take a vacation. You already bought the plane ticket. You already got permission from your job. So it's very unlikely that you'll change these plans. In order to express these ideas, you're going to use be going to to express that. So for example, I'm going to take vacations next week. I'm going to go to f France. That's just a quick example there. Um, you're almost sure that that event will happen. On the other hand, let's say that you're gonna, uh, you want to take vacation, but you don't know yet. You haven't even asked your boss about it yet. And so um, you're chatting with some friends, and they ask you, "So, what are you planning to do for your vacations?" And maybe you respond, "Well, I'm not sure. I guess I'll go to Europe next month, but I don't know. I haven't bought the tickets. I haven't." ask my boss whether I can go or not and so in order to express that idea that you haven't decided on then we're gonna use these expressions I guess I'll just um, stay home Th these are the examples here in the book but um, going back to our example about vacations I guess I'll travel but I'm not sure where uh, maybe I'll go somewhere in, in Europe. I probably will go somewhere in Europe. And that's, I mean, those are just my examples on, on how uh, you will use these expressions. But the idea here is that if you're thinking about something that you're not sure about whether that will happen or not, then you're going to use these expressions towards the right. And that's the difference that we're going to learn in this particular class. So quickly before we talk about this particular chart, what I would like to do is just present the structure on how to form sentences with be going to. So the examples on the left side of this chart. Okay, guys, vamos a saltarnos esta parte por ahora porque estamos viendo la parte de Will. Okay, so I'm going to, um, just to I'm just going to forward the video just a little bit because we're not going to talk about this at this moment. Okay, we're going to continue with Will. Let's see. Vamos a ver. Lo voy a poner por acá. Creo que por acá es. Vamos a ver. Now let me talk about the possibilities of what I'm going to do at my house. And so um, what I want to do is present this structure towards the right because what I want to do is I want to think about the things that I haven't made a decision on. So in order for me to express those ideas, what I want to do is I want to have some sort of possibility, if you will. All right, and so what do I mean by that? Well, the expressions such as I guess, all right, the expression maybe, uh, the expression I think, the expression I probably, okay, um, and so that's what I want you to notice here, right? So, well, I'm going to stay home for the weekend, I guess, and then this is going to follow a subject. I will. watch the football game all right and so I could do the same thing for the rest of the possibilities that I mentioned these are just words that will guide me towards expressing that this is not something that I've decided on maybe I'll watch the football game I think I'll watch the football game I probably will watch the football game now, um, with this last one here, I would like for you to pay attention to that one. Um, this is not going to follow the subject, okay? Uh, it will just continue to follow. I probably will watch the football game. But for the rest, you will need that subject there in the middle, okay? I guess I'll watch the football game. Maybe I'll watch the football game. I think I'll watch the football game but however with this one you don't want to use uh, a subject there in the middle I probably will watch the football game however with this one de acuerdo guys entonces en esta parte tenemos eh, otra estructura es otra posibilidad que nosotros tenemos para que podamos hablar 
de el futuro utilizando Will. ¿Ok? Entonces, como les mencionaba anteriormente, tenemos estas expresiones como I guess, maybe, I think, and probably. ¿Ok? Entonces, se nos acaba de explicar acá que en estas, con excepción de probably, nosotros vamos a colocar acá el sujeto en el medio, ¿ok? Like this. I guess I will watch the football game. Maybe I will watch the football game. Or I think I will watch the football game, ¿ok? That is just an example. Uh, you can say, I guess I will stay home for the weekend. Or maybe I will stay home for the weekend. Things like that. Pero cuando nosotros utilizamos eh, probably, en ese caso ya no lo vamos a hacer de la misma forma que estas anteriores. Eh, no vamos a anteceder a will del sujeto, sino que directamente es I probably will watch the football game. ¿okay? No le vamos a colocar I antes del verbo will. En este caso, para probably. Para los demás, sí. Va a estar antes del verbo, ¿de acuerdo? So, I guess I will watch the football game. Maybe I will watch the football game. Or I think I will watch the football game. So, as you can see, we have the subject that goes before this, this uh, auxiliary verb, right? Así que, y esto lo utilizamos, guys, para hablar acerca de algo que nosotros no estamos seguros. Ok, también nos daba el ejemplo en el video acerca de las vacaciones. Eh, digamos, si no tenemos permiso de parte del trabajo, si no hemos comprado, por ejemplo, eh, los boletos para el transporte y todo esto, pues en esos casos podríamos utilizar eh, will en lugar de be going to, porque es algo que no estamos seguros. Ok, entonces ya vamos a practicar, creo que vamos a practicar quizás un ratito. Eh, utilizando estas expresiones. Ya, ya vamos a practicar, ¿de acuerdo? Así que vamos a terminar de ver el video. You don't want to use uh, a subject there in the middle. I... The last thing that I would like for you to do is to think about your next vacation. And make a plan of where you want to go. And then within that plan, think of all the possibilities. And of course, use this topic that we're covering today in class. So you may use these questions to help you with this exercise. How are you going to spend your next vacation? Where are you going to go? When are you going to take your next vacation? How long are you going to be on vacation? Now, if you look at, let's say, the second question, where are you going to go? You might have decided to take your vacation and you might know exactly where to go. And then again, you might not. So if you're sure about it, then you're going to use the expressions towards the left. You're going to use be going to plus, um, you know, whatever complement that exists. So you're going to use I'm going to go to Europe. All right. That could be a, um, your plan. But if you don't know, you haven't decided on I'm not sure of where I'm going to go. I guess I'll travel, but I don't know where. And so you'll use the expressions towards the right side of this chart. De acuerdo, guys. Entonces vamos a practicar quizás por unos minutos. Vamos a enfocarnos en la parte de utilizar will, ¿ok? Entonces acá tenemos tenemos estas preguntas, eh, perdón. I'll travel. Acá tenemos estas preguntas, tenemos cuatro. Uh, number one, it says, how are you going to spend your next vacation? So what are you going to do in your next vacation? Like, for example, are you going to go to the beach? Are you going to go to the mountain? Are you going to travel to another country? Uh, so you can answer it saying things like that, okay? Uh, you can say, maybe I'll go uh, to Europe, okay? Or maybe I'll go uh, visit my family in the US, things like that, okay? So we want to use those expressions. That is the, the goal for this uh, practice that we're going to have. Uh, we need to use will and we need to use these expressions. Like this. De acuerdo, en la primera vamos a decir qué es lo que vamos a hacer. En la segunda eh, podemos decir eh, dónde. No importa si ya lo dijeron anteriormente. Pero ustedes pueden decir, eh, I probably will go uh, to the mountain uh, with some friends. Or oh, I, probably, eh, I probably will stay home 
things like that. Eh, luego, eh, ¿cuándo te vas a tomar tu próxima vacación? Eh, I'm not sure. I guess I'll, I'll have my next vacation uh, by the end of the year. Or I'm not sure. I guess I'll have my next vacation in two months. But I'm not sure. Okay. Y luego, eh, ¿por cuánto tiempo vas a estar de vacaciones? Okay. Ok, eso así es como lo decimos. To be on vacation. Ok, I'm on vacation. Entonces, eso es lo que quiero que hagamos. Eh, vamos a contestar estas preguntas así, de forma grupal, acerca de eh, las vacaciones, utilizando estas expresiones de acá. Ok, entonces, eso vamos a hacer, guys. Perdón. Eh, vaya, vamos a hacer los grupos y vamos a practicar, ok. Al menos por unos... Eh, 13 o 15 minutos. De acuerdo, aquí vamos. ¿Alguna pregunta, guys, antes de que comencemos eh, con la práctica? No, teacher. No questions so far. Ok. So here we go. Vamos a ver. Ahí está. Les voy a compartir, guys, eh, las preguntas en el chat de WhatsApp, ¿ok? Para que las tengan por ahí. Vamos a ver acá. Maybe I will go. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that, Sofia. Let me see if I can get you in a different group. Let me see. Sorry. In progress. Doing, guys. Hi. Hello, guys. Uh, do you have any questions about the activity? I send you the questions Hello. on the WhatsApp group, just in case. Okay. Uh, ahorita estamos uh, contestándolas para compartir. Okay, very good. Very good, Christian. Any questions <laughs> so far? No, I, I don't have questions. No questions Thank at this you. moment. Thank okay, you. you're welcome. Very good, guys. Okay, vamos a ver entonces por otra parte, a ver qué tal. I think that I, I'm going to go to the beach. I think so. Hello, teacher. Hello, Joel. How are you doing? Okay, so I was listening to you and 
uh, you were saying that you think that you will go to the beach. It's a possibility. Okay. Maybe. So, maybe. Okay, so remember, uh, Joel, that in that case, you want to say that, uh, we need to say, I think I will go. Okay, because if you're saying that you think, it's because you are not sure. Okay, when we are sure about something, when we have decided that we are going to do something, then we use be going to. Okay, so you say, eh, no vamos a decir, por ejemplo, eh, yo creo que no es tan recomendable, ¿verdad? Yo creo que yo voy a ir. Porque si usted dice que yo voy a ir, es como que ya está decidido. Entonces, cuando usted dice yo creo, mejor utilizamos will. So, I think I will go to the beach. Ok. Ok, teacher. Bueno, ahorita estamos eh, como tratando de enfocarnos en esa parte de will. Y de estas expresiones que yo les compartí, ¿verdad? Que sería como I guess, maybe, I think, probably. Todas, todas esas expresiones vamos a utilizar. Ok, ¿alguna otra pregunta, eh, Joel, por ahora? Lo voy a dejar no question, Ok, very good. So I will let you guys so you can practice. Okay, thank you. Hi, C. Uh, no, maybe uh, one more. Okay. Very good. Yes. I relax. Yes. yes. Uh. <laughs> But good time with my family. Ah. Uh. <laughs> it was best. I'm sorry. It's like it was good. Yeah. Teacher, mm -hmm. I okay. one question. So what, um, what is your question? Como, ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo identificamos? O sea, para hacer la pregunta o para contestar, eh, por la explicación que usted dio, es un poco más fácil de entender. Pero cuando alguien me lo está diciendo, ¿cómo lo identifico? Eh, ¿Cómo en qué caso? A ver, no sé si me puede dar un ejemplo, Iris. Por ejemplo, por ejemplo, bueno, como hablan tan rápido, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Y a veces cuando lo contraen cuesta identificar, bueno, en mi caso sí. me cuesta identificar <ríe> identificar yes. eh, si está usando will o está usando going to porque he escuchado algunas conversaciones y yo digo que estuve haciendo eso y qué caso está usando uh -huh. o sea me costó captar eh, cómo lo está usando entonces uh -huh. se busca el contexto o hay alguna otra forma cuando uno logra captar <ríe> esa parte eh, sí bueno yo creo creo iris que al principio como usted dice cuesta un poquito verdad pero eh, por eso es que nosotros hacemos las actividades como de listening y todo eso, para que ustedes pues, se puedan familiarizar, ¿verdad? Y como dice, normalmente cuando es eh, be going to y cuando es will, eh, principalmente lo hacen como de una forma contractada, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, recuerde que siempre que es, un, que es utilizando will, eh, tenemos el verbo en la forma base, ¿de acuerdo? Y cuando es eh, be going to, entonces va a ser como que uh, I guess, uh, well, I'm going to go to the beach. Okay? Siempre tiene going to en luego el verbo. Entonces, creo que eso es lo que nos va a decir cuál se está utilizando, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Y también este, otras expresiones como las que les mencioné hace un momento. Por ejemplo, maybe, I'm not sure, or probably, eh, I think. Todas esas expresiones básicamente nos dicen que estamos utilizando como will, ¿de acuerdo? Porque no estamos seguros. En cambio, okay. cuando, cuando ya lo tenemos eh, planeado con anticipación, nosotros utilizamos eh, be going to. Like, I'm going to go to the beach with my cousin. We are going to 
uh, go surfing every day, and then uh, maybe we will do something more. Okay, si usted se fija, eh, es diferente, ¿verdad? La estructura incluso. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Entonces, okay. por ahí, por ahí. No sé si... Creo que es de, es de, es de prestar más atención y uh, para, uh, para identificar, porque así como lo está diciendo usted bien, se identifica el going to, el will. <ríe> porque es más despacio y así, y todo eso, ¿verdad? <ríe> sí. sí, thank you, Tish. You're welcome, yes. So don't worry, don't worry, it is. It, it may be difficult at the beginning, but then we just need to practice. And with time, it gets easier, okay? So you, you just need to practice more every day. Tenemos que practicar bastante, vamos a practicar. Yes. Eh, eh, la... es, es difficult, but... I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. I say, I say it's difficult, but in the El Salvador, I know I speak English. <laughs> that's true, yes. Yeah, yes, that's true because we don't speak English like every day. Uh, so that is the reason why I want to give you guys this opportunity so you can practice. I know that I know that you guys have a lot of knowledge, I know that you guys know a lot of things. I know Byron and you, Iris, you both know a lot of things. So we just need to practice. Y si tienen alguna duda, pues yo con gusto les puedo ayudar siempre, ¿verdad? No hay ningún problema. Pero yo, yo sé que ustedes solamente tienen que practicar. Eso es todo. Byron, Iris, ustedes son muy buenos, la verdad. Thank you, teacher. I, Thank I, you, teacher. How do you say um, estoy intentando en in inglés? I'm trying. I trying to listen music and mm -hmm. uh, reading and speak the the, the music mm -hmm. very good yes i mean you can listen to music you can try to uh, sing songs or you know all those kind of things are really good uh, something that i did when i was learning is that i i usually let's say i usually read like a paragraph i read like um something from a book and I try to record what I was saying so I can you know you can analyze so you can just like test uh, the way that you're doing okay that is something that can help you you can record yourself that is something good entonces esas son cosas que podemos hacer Iris. Se, puede, se puede grabar por ejemplo haga esto eh, digamos escuche algo de una persona que es nativa por ejemplo y luego usted trate de imitarlo y grábese y vea por ahí, ¿verdad? Que en esta parte estoy fallando, esta parte me falta y así. Eso ayuda bastante. Y también, eh, por ejemplo, ver películas con subtítulos, cosas por el estilo, ayudan bastante también. Uh -huh. Voy a empezar a practicar eso con más, inten más intencionalmente, quizás. Correcto, esa es, es la clave. Hay que hacerlo más. Mientras más nos expongamos a algo, más fácil va a ser. Okay. Entonces, vaya, les voy a hacer unas preguntas aquí a ustedes rapidito. Vaya, si yo les dijera, how are you going to spend your next vacation? What is going to be the answer for that? Let's say that you guys didn't plan anything yet. So, what would you say? How are you going to spend your next vacation? Um, I, I, go, um, I am going to relax. Uh, mm -hmm. to the mountain mountain mm -hmm. with my family okay so you can say I'm going to go to the mountain uh, so I can okay. relax with my family okay go ah yeah mm -hmm. vaya en ese caso <laughs> usted lo está diciendo como que ya lo ha decidido pero digamos de que But, usted no está pero, segura pero no no estoy segura por eso que por eso la quería hacer esta porque en este caso, yo puse going to, pero no estoy seguro. O sea, es como si tengo la intención, pero no hay seguridad. Entonces, uh -huh. tengo que usar will. En ese caso sería will, porque no estamos Entonces, seguros. Entonces, I am will. No. Go, eh, I am... Ajá. No, en ese caso sería diferente. Vaya, <coughs> recuerde okay. que la estructura es el sujeto, luego will, ah, yeah. luego el verbo. Sí, cambia. No solo tengo que decir, no con la estructura, según la estructura. Uh -huh. Ok, Correct. I understand, teacher. 
Por Vaya, ahí, señor. corregirla mientras contesta Byron. <ríe> Vaya, vamos a ver Byron. ¿Cómo sería Byron? I'm not sure. Y luego, I, maybe I will go to the hospital. Okay, very good. There you go. There you go. Very good, Byron. Very good job. Okay, entonces así. Muy buen ejemplo, Byron. Entonces así lo tenemos que hacer. Iris, usted puede decir, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe I will go to the mountain and relax with my family. La puedo decir así, I will go relax to the mountain with my family, o no. Sí, lo puede decir, la verdad que está bastante bien, solamente quizás algunas cositas le pudiéramos cambiar, ¿verdad? Eh, Ajá. Por lo demás está bien. Usted puede decir, uh, I will go uh, to the mountain and relax with my family. Ok, I will go to the mountain ah, okay. and okay. relax. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Entonces, ahí está. Ya vamos haciendo progreso. Eso está muy bien, Iris. Solo tenemos que practicar más veces. Ok. Vaya. Este, por ahora, guys, creo que nos vamos a quedar hasta aquí porque ya se nos acabó el tiempo, ¿verdad? Entonces, voy a tener que cerrar la actividad y mañana vamos a practicar. No se preocupen. Vamos a tener más tiempo para practicar. Ok. Ahora solamente era como la introducción. Así que okay. vamos a... Ok. Okay, so I'm just going to close the rooms so I can say goodbye. Bye. Here we go, guys. Bye. Click the breakout. There we go. Hello guys, uh, thank you so much for staying until the end. Bueno, creo que los demás quizás ya se fueron, ¿verdad? <laughs> ya era muy noche. <laughs> bueno. Thanks, teacher. Bye bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> See you tomorrow, guys. See you, teacher. See you. Bye bye. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Good night. You're welcome. Good night. De acuerdo, guys, eh, muchas gracias por quedarse hasta el final. Ya hasta aquí nos vamos a quedar por ahora. Vamos a continuar el día de mañana, ¿de acuerdo? Ok, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome, guys. Good evening. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye.